Oh, I feel like I'm always eating. We weren't this busy when we started doing this show. <laughs> you and I, neither one were this. Like, I didn't have the kids, I don't think, as much. Did I? Didn't I Didn't I start getting the kids more after we started doing the show? You mean you started to be a good father? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I joke. Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. Tell okay. me that it doesn't sound a little delicious, maybe. I swear to you, I will walk out and leave your ass. You picture J.R. Ewing while you're having sex? I don't do anything but talk. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. I got to tell you this story. So last Saturday, I'm in the car. I'm with my mom and dad and uh, Honey Bun. And we're going to my sister's wedding shower. She's getting married uh, at New Year's. Uh, we're on our way over to the you know, the bigger city here, uh, Shreveport. And uh, we get stuck on the interstate. There's bad traffic. There's been an accident or something earlier. And so they were detouring people off. Did you know it was an accident or did you think no, it was I, like construction or something? No, I no, I mean, it, it was obvious that there had been something like a spill or something. I, I still don't know exactly what it was. But I mean, like the way that the cops were treating the situation is obvious. There was something going on on the interstate that had been a surprise. And it was actually kind of wrapped up just as we got detoured but we're detoured and so everybody is getting off the interstate right like the cops literally got the interstate blocked and and he's waving people off onto the on-ramp or whatever and so there's a long line of cars all moving over into the right hand lane right yep what happens some jackass jumps over onto the shoulder of the road right and races up to the front of the line he's oh i'm gonna be smart and skip everybody all these suckers waiting in line I loved it, man. The guy, the car in the front of the line blocks them, won't let them over. Like, they won't let them over. There. Everybody's maintaining tight bumper to bumper or whatever. And I'm like, hell yeah, keep him out. Just make him sit there and wait. Even better than that, though, the cop that's directing traffic stops directing traffic, walks over between the two cars and orders that car, the car that's skipped around on the shoulder of the road, to pull over and park. And then he get, he waits until the line separates so he can walk through, walks over there. He gave him a fucking ticket for driving on the shoulder of the road. I loved it. That seems to never happen. I know it does. That's what I'm saying. It's karmic justice for all those for all those people. Who's, you're doing the right thing. You're orderly getting in line. Everybody has to. All 100,000, whatever it is, cars on the fucking interstate. We've all got to go through this same hassle. Everybody's got somewhere to be, jackass. Everybody understands that we could get over on the shoulder of the road and skirt the rules. It's just like line breaking, you know, like at a, an amusement park or at a restaurant or something. The, the guy who does it, they always think they're smart. And you know it because you've heard it. Oh, well, these idiots, I'll get over here in the left-hand lane and run up to the front and then scoot over or whatever. They always think they're being smart like nobody else thought about it. No, jackass. Everybody else is just being polite and, and following the rules. I mean, the same the same thing happened to me today uh, because of the construction going on in town. So much. It's such a pain it in the ass. didn't bother me. I, you mean somebody cut you off? Oh, like three three or four people did, yeah. Well, but you're, a, you're like a wave them in kind of guy too, though. Yeah, because if I just... Hey, if I just make this happen, then it speeds everybody up instead of everybody having to wait. Uh, yes, no, I agree with that. I'm, but, but, but at you the didn't same, let the person through. Okay, but in this circumstance, it's not like he didn't see what was going on. He had very specific, there was a gigantic line of cars, and he raced around it, thinking that he could skirt the process, and because he, whatever he had going on was more important than the rest of us assholes. Maybe it was. He wasn't a fucking doctor. He's not a policeman. Put on your siren if you've got an emergency. You know what I mean? Put on your hazard lights. Maybe he just got a call that his kid tried to OD on some cough syrup. You don't know. It's possible. I don't think that's the case. Well, now you made me feel really bad about... And you should. ...being excited that they got a you ticket. You should. I don't think... I, I think... I think it it is it is what it is. It was kar- karmic justice. That's yeah, but exactly what's going what to happen to you now that you were so happy and excited that something bad happened to them? You. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to get a ticket. Bad's going to happen to you for my expired inspection sticker or something. Go ahead and mm. put it out there. Well, I mean, it's not like we get. Dude, you think cops in our town listen to this show? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. Anyway, 
If they do, if they do, hopefully they like me enough they would they would just help me fix it. They wouldn't they wouldn't come and give me a ticket for it. <laughs> Maybe they're just fans of yours and they're like, "Fuck you. You make too much fun of the other guy." Oh, I'll handle you and your inspection sticker. And I know a lot more cops than you. Uh, you do know a lot of cops. Why is that? That's so strange. Hey. I don't trust that about you. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, a mistake. <laughs> They're admitted to a mistake. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. Sort of. Although you're not going to own up to it. I don't know why I'm even bringing this up, really. I always own up to my mistakes. I We referenced the legend of George Washington and the cherry tree. No, we didn't. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. You referenced a legend of Abraham Lincoln and the cherry tree. No, I didn't. No? No, you didn't? The tradition has that George Washington, America's first president, chopped down a cherry tree in his youth. The incident may have been the concoction of an ex-parson turned bookseller, Mason Locke Weems, who first wrote about the incident. According to Weems, young George had a new hatchet. Hatchets are meant for chopping wood. The trunk of the supposed cherry tree was, of course, wood, so what better place for George to try out his new tool? In Weems' story, George gives the tree a good whack and chops it down. His father sees the damaged tree and asks his son if he knows who did the deed. George is reported in Weems' writing to have replied to his father's query by answering, I can't tell a lie, Pa. You know I can't tell a lie. I did cut it with my hatchet. So, yeah, it was George Washington. My little hatchet. That's right. Uh, It was was George Washington that supposedly cut down the cherry tree. And, of course, it's... Uh, most people think that now that's that's literally just an invented story, and there's there's no basis I'm, in his. I'm pretty sure I life. I made it clear last week that I was staying out of it, but that we just needed to check it because you could be wrong. I I think you thought I was wrong. You just didn't feel strongly enough about it to step out on a limb like a man would. Yeah, I put my money where my mouth is. Not really? that I have any money. Really? Not that I have any money. Uh, speaking of, you actually had a great idea the other night about how we can keep tally of these little oh yeah mistakes when 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 you and I go up against each other. I uh, the the fantasy focus podcast that I listen to, they do the put it on the board thing. We do have a board, but that's no fun. No. We go we go put it on a dollar. Yes. Keep a dollar bill and we'll write who won. We'll keep score, you on one side, me on the other and just hashtag every time one of us wins. And pass it back and forth. I like it. I got a crisp dollar bill there. And it's one, this is one that I don't mind losing. In fact, I would enjoy losing as many times as I won because the thought of me every week being able to take a dollar from you, it makes me smile. <laughs> Which is so weird. You're such a generous dude. Like, you like you buy everywhere we go. And not just, it's not like it's not like I'm your, your man bitch or something. Like, like you, you pay for all of our friends when you so go out. If you so lucky. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, it'd be a good gig probably. Right now, I think it's just the act of me actually taking something away from you. Something ah. that's value to you and, and means nothing to me. <laughs> that's such an ass hat thing to say. <laughs> That is an asshat thing to say. I apologize. We've been asking over and over and over again for emails. We get a few from time to time. Not nearly as many as we'd like. Not nearly as many as we know. We know people are listening. We've got the statistics, people. We know it's like. But how many? But how many of these would actually get? Like, how many would we actually get to? Ah, uh, that's true. Probably not more than we do already. Not more than we get. Yeah, there'd just be noise in the background, I guess. That's a good point. That's a good point. You've only got so much time on the show. But um, it is a little weird to me, though. We've got all of these people we know are listening because we see the downloads in different cities. It's it's like we've got people lurking in the corner of the room that aren't saying anything at a party. Like they're just lit- they're, like they walked in the party, stood over in the corner, and they're just staring at us. I'm worth staring at. <laughs> I mean, doesn't bother me. And this is a Dear Other Guy letter, too. Ooh. Yeah, I'm very excited about this. I will try to give Sage sound advice. First off, I want to say- I'm going to take it serious. I'm, I'm taking it serious. Good. You should. You should. This, these are, this is people's lives that we're talking about Unless here. I think you're stupid. Uh, fair enough. You can, of course, email us, twoguysonepod at me.com, twoguysonepod at me.com, and that's no, all no written rules. out. That's all right. Um, and, of course, you can find us online if you forget the email address or you want to find where we are, stream the show, etc. cetera, twoguysonepod.com. Really easy, twoguysonepod.com. This is a young lady, by the Favorite way. kind. Yes. But it'd be even cooler if it was an old lady. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool if yeah. it was like 72-year-old grandma <laughs> writing us for advice. 
<laughs> That'd be sweet. I'm having trouble with my man whores. <laughs> uh, she starts off. <laughs> you got real excited about. You got real excited about like the female pimp grandma. You got real. Like, were you saying man whores, or is she just kinky enough to call her man the horse? Oh no, no, I was saying I'm man having whores. trouble with my man horse. As it as as if she had multiple male whores. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This young lady starts off the email with. I'm really enjoying the show, exclamation point. I like that. Everybody likes their ego struck. Uh, she says she started listening about two weeks ago. She's playing catch up uh, on the past episodes, which that's a great thing about podcasting, right? doesn't matter when you start the show. You can always go back and listen from the beginning. Uh, BT Dub, by the time <laughs> this episode is posted, episode one will have joined the feed. So if you've, if you've been subscribing in iTunes or if you listen on Facebook or whatever, you'll be able to listen to episode one, too, this week. <laughs> I would have been more impressed with that sentence if you would have just went BT dub, BTT, and I'd be like, "What the fuck is BTT?" And you're like, "By the time." Oh, uh, like yeah. you couldn't you couldn't bother yourself with "by the way." I say BT dub, but by the time you have you have all all damn day to say that. I don't. Well, B, if you say BTT though, nobody knows what that is. So nobody uses that abbreviation. Who cares? Then it's not you're, shorthand. No, but hey, hey. Somebody had to be the first person to use BT dub. You make a good point. So you're saying I should step out there and claim BTT? But you didn't. All right. Well, now it's too late. I've yeah. lost my, my chance at immortality. I wouldn't say at that. linguistic immortality? Wouldn't go that far either. No. All right. Anyway, she says um, she's catching up on the past episodes. Um, hopes you keep it up. Uh, you've got a good balance. Uh, she also says that we sound very cute. Our ladies are very lucky to have such funny, smart, and I'm assuming attractive men. Yes, ma'am. Get your tongue out of my asshole. <laughs> All right. Here's uh, my question for the other guy. She says she doesn't have a funny nickname like the other people you talk about, um, but perhaps we can come up with an idea. Well, I'll read the email, and then we'll decide what to call it. I kind of want to call her the nameless one. The nameless one? She who shan't be named. She's a sweet girl. I think she who shan't be named is actually pretty good. I like that. Okay. Uh, dear other guy, I've been seeing this guy for almost six months now. Now, there's some trouble right there. I've been seeing this guy for almost six months. That doesn't bother me. The world of vagary. All right. Everything's pretty much perfect. We love spending time together. He really cares about me. We spend almost every night together. We laugh more together than anyone we've uh, we've ever dated before, and we're pretty much a couple in the conventional sense. She I like how she's uh, I like how she's speaking for him as well too. Uh, a couple of times there, sometimes she's speaking for herself, sometimes for both of them. We, it's we obvious. laugh with each other more than anyone else. You might. Well, that sounds to me like they've discussed it. Like she has said, "Hey, are you enjoying this thing as much as I'm enjoying it?" And but you never know how honest they are. Right? Okay. She goes on. The sex is incredible. Every time it's fireworks. The only problem is he won't call me his girlfriend. I've tried bringing it up, and when I do, he almost makes me feel guilty about it. it says things like, what we have is so special. Why do we have to label it? I know he had a painful breakup with his girlfriend before me, which I think might be a part of this. So I'm trying to be understanding, but I don't think one thing should have anything to do with the other. I'm a different person. Why do I miss out because she went all Mexican tap dance on his heart? Sometimes I'm okay with how things are, but other times I get really angry, especially when my and his friends get on my case about it. I wish you would have went MMA on his heart. <laughs> um, I know there's the why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free idea, which I could rebut with why buy the pig for just a little sausage. <laughs> I've never heard that one. That's an excellent, excellent one. Um, but it's just obvious to everyone how much we both like each other. Neither one of us is seeing anyone else. Our relationship is starting to suffer now because even though I say I'm fine with how things are, deep down this is really bothering me. I feel very, I feel really hurt by the fact that even though I am his girlfriend, he won't acknowledge me in that way. Can you please shed some light on what's going on here? Hmm. And no, Honey Bun didn't write this. This isn't from <laughs> Honey Bun. This isn't from Honey Bun four, four or five months ago. I, oh. I don't think so. If, if she did, it's, it's she used a pseudonym. It'd be sweet. <laughs> From a new email address. It's a pretty similar situation, though, to what I was in, right? I mean, you you were on the outside. It's a lot like what Honey Bun and I had, right? Oh, yeah, but the advice that I would have given her would have been completely than, than the advice that I gave you. 
Oh, the advice you're about to give to to she who shan't be named. Yes, it's different than what you gave me. Yeah, because uh, y'all are different sides of the same coin. Yes, so you can't. It's not the yeah, same advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if we were talking to the guy, he who won't name the girlfriend, okay, she who shan't be named. Here's, that actually fits. She who shan't be named. That is her nickname because he won't name her girlfriend. He won't pass the title on. Look how smart I is. Yeah. Um, all right, so here's the deal. I I don't Facebook, I don't social media at all. But on there, you can put whether you're in a relationship, single, gets complicated, what, whatever. My question would be, what does he have on that? Because he's showing somebody a false face. Uh, okay. If he's listed as single, okay, then he's lying. Yes. To either her. Yes. Or to everyone on Facebook. Correct. Now, what if he's like me? Here's what I did I long time ago. Like, about the time I got separated from... Yeah, when I got separated from... When my wife and I separated, I, I took my Facebook status off altogether. My relationship status just wasn't on Facebook. I was nothing. I didn't show up as single, divorced, widowed, in a relationship, anything. And I left it that way, even after I started seeing... Honey bun. What is it now? Now it says in a relationship with her. We're we're connected on Facebook. Why did we you are make the Facebook change? Official. Why did you make the change? Um You know, I don't know. I did it on her birthday. I got a bunch of oh, because was that for you her knew birthday? She, because you knew she wanted it. I think yeah, there was a part of yeah, her that so wanted it. So you knew it. she wanted it and you were willing to make that change to make her happy. Not necessarily for her, but you knew it'd be something to make her happy and you're willing to make that change. If that's the case, is this guy willing to make the change? Uh, and then I'd also suggest sitting down, talking, and and knowing that the re- the conversation is going to be to define to define the relationship, and it needs to be a definition that makes both sides happy, or one side will start resenting the other sooner or later. Yeah. So they don't. They may not have to say their boyfriend or girlfriend. They may not have to say, but whatever, whatever definition they come up with for what they're in, if they're truly happy in it, then have that conversation. And make that statement at least to yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I gave some advice actually to a friend in LA that was having a, a similar situation. She's she's been seeing the guy, it's good, she likes him, it's all fun, but he doesn't she thinks he's just in it for the sex. And and my advice to her was, I said, if you're enjoying the sex and you like the time that you spend with him, well then keep doing that. And look for something better if that's what you want. If you want a relationship and spend some time looking for something better and have some sex when you want it with that guy that you like having sex with. Yeah, if you want a relationship, <laughs> have the relationship. If you want a relationship and they don't, That's, somebody else will. Yes, yes. And I mean, I obviously this young lady's got good taste. <laughs> I don't know her that well. I'm saying she likes our show. She thinks we're attractive. She's got to have good that taste. That makes one of us. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, she who shan't be named, that's our advice. You, she's got to have it out. At least at least with herself, she's got to define the – even if she's not going to have the conversation like a real DTR conversation with him, she's at least got to decide whether there's a thing that she wants to continue herself. If she's unhappy, if I can find somebody else. And then, and what is he saying to everybody else? Is it the same thing he's saying to her? Yeah. Yeah, when when you she brings up she mentions that his friends have bothered her about, "Hey, when are you guys going to start? Why and why aren't y'all dating? What's the deal?" blah 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 whatever. Are they doing that to him and what is his response to him? Right. To them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the real question right there. How's he handling it with his friends? Cuz you know, I mean, you always have you've always had lady friends you wouldn't be in a relationship with and then your buddies would be like, "Hey, what's the deal with Blase blah?" And you're like, "I ah, were just fucking." Yeah. And I mean, especially I mean, if, I'm not telling that girl that. Right. <laughs> But at the same time, okay, so if one of the lady friends, though, gets to be – if 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 your buddy gets to really like one of the lady friends, then perhaps they start doing it on the girl's side, too. They're like, hey, when are you going to make this dude settle down? Because let's be honest, I, you and me, for instance, like you're married, you're a settled guy. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Like a rock. If I'm, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good if I'm out chasing tail every single night. Like you can't, It's not like you can come party with me, you know? What you want is for me to have a, a settled significant other that, that you like, that doesn't get in the way of me and you hanging out. Funny how that kind of happened. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, you got a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a way of working shit out. 
anyway, hey, thanks for listening. She who shan't be named. Um, let us the next time you email us. Let us know where you're listening from. That's another thing. Uh, whenever you email us, tell us what city you're listening from. We we we've got. Other guys shaking his head. You don't give a shit. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't care where she's from. <laughs> I want to know what happens with the dude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely follow up. Let us know what happens there. Thanks for listening, though. We're glad you found the podcast. You got a ton of stuff to listen to. You got thirteen weeks so far, and 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 this one that you're about to listen to. Yeah, and I want to know what. Oh man, that means I got to wait two goddamn weeks to At figure least two out. Two weeks. That's right. We're living in the future. <laughs> We're speaking from the past. Um. I got a few – I put up a question on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two guys, one pod. Do I get to answer it? Can I answer it? Is it a question I can answer? Sure. Okay. It's a yes or no question. All right. I can answer You've those. already answered it. Oh. You, you're the one that started it. Uh, you just didn't know. The question was, is other guy right? Am I a pinko commie killjoy? A commie fascist killjoy. That was your wording, right? For uh, not being into the Olympics. Um, I think it was freeloading commie fascist killjoy. Oh, that's right. I forgot freeloading because I'm sucking off the American teat without pulling and, my own weight. Yeah, you're not even supporting them. You got a couple of supporters. Yeah, those are called Americans. <laughs> the Pico, freeloading Pico commies, commie fascist killjoys. They came out in force, though. In a uh, narrow victory, I am not uh, an American because I'm not into the Olympics. Did you count my vote? No. You don't count. I didn't get to vote either. You made it clear last time that I put out a question that my vote didn't count. I'll I'll like to point out, by the way, did my I wife did vote? count. Yes, your wife voted. Honey Bun didn't. Ha ha. So how about that? Damn it. Yeah. Things got weighted on your side and I still won. No, dude. It just shows you the state this country's really in. <laughs> <laughs> how far downhill we've come. We got a couple of Olympic stories, by the way. I, I just want to mention real quick. Um, and we have we have an Olympic game. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, so first off, let's let's catch people up. Last week, I said that I was going to watch some Olympics. I did. You did. I went home that night, and and you liked what you saw. Loved it. In fact, we watched. Maybe 30 minutes. Of water polo. Water polo. Women's water polo. I don't even think it was the U.S. team, was it? Was it the U.S. women's team? I don't know. I don't. Maybe. <laughs> here's, here's what was amazing to me, though. If you haven't watched water polo, what the fuck? You got it. Uh, like, right now, pause this podcast, go to YouTube and look up some water polo. They swim up and down this gigantic pool, tread water, for two fucking hours. Never touch, yeah, never touch the bottom. And the deal is, is... You get drowned a lot too. You get pushed under the water. Yeah, like on okay. purpose. So you, it's okay. You've got the ball and you're and you're swimming up up. To, it's not court. Up pool. You're swimming up pool. <laughs> and to, it's not a goal. It's a cage. Is, oh, that's what they call it. Yeah, and, you throw it into the, You got to score in the cage. So do they? So do they call like I scored three cages? Or oh, I, I don't. I just I don't know, know it's called a cage, not a goal. All right, fair enough. Anyway, so yeah, you're racing up towards the cage, and I'm the defender. One way that I can handle you is just shove you under the water. Yeah, shove me under the water. They whistle. They blow a whistle to let you back up out of the water, and they reset the ball when that happens. So it's like a foul or something yeah. in basketball. But there's no penalty for me holding you under the water for a second. There's no – like I'm not – I don't get a yellow card or anything, which means that it happens every fucking play. Well, that, And that's why it takes <clears throat> so long is because there's so many stoppages. Yeah. And it's in like soccer, they do like they do regulation time, and then however long they've been stopped, that time's added on. I'm not sure that's true. No. Oh, okay. Because they stop, they actually stop. Oh, oh, they stop the clock. Stops. That's yeah. right, they stop the clock, which they don't do in soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay, so probably not the stoppage time then. But anyway, the sheer athletic ability, and not a, it's not even ability. It's not like it's talent. It's just the sheer athletic determination to hang with a sport for two fucking hours when you're treading water the whole time. I mean, I can't tread water for 15 minutes, and I'm in way better shape than I've ever been in my life. Athletes, man. Yeah. Athletes. For real. Anyway, I was very impressed with women's water polo. So <laughs> Im so impressed. So impressed, in fact, that I didn't watch any more of it the rest of the week or any other Olympic sports. So, there's that. I w it was busy. I've been very busy. You know what I've been doing? I've been making art, motherfucker. I, like, I drew... 
uh, a whole new video story thing for for my other kid now, and that's been posted online. I made a commercial for us, a little video snippet yep. thing to put on YouTube. I, I've been doing, doing work. work. That's yep. right. Yeah, I uh, I did uh, because the track the track and field events have started, which I fucking love. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean that's your that's your stuff. Yeah, I'm down with the track and field events. And I was specifically like fast forwarding it or, or trying to hit the 800 meters, which was what my race was. Right. And it got me thinking, and I've never done this before. Would my best time in that distance have ever been a world record? Yeah. 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 You and I talked about this. What a. I mean, we're just. Because now we're just better athletes than better, better diet, better. I mean, everything has made yeah. us. I mean, 25 years ago, yeah. professional athletes were. A lot of them were overweight. And they smoked. But, I mean, I'm talking about even back, like, 120 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So right. how far back do you have to go? What was your best time? One one fifty six. Uh, That's 156 seconds? 156 seconds. For a 100-meter dash. No, 800-meter dash. Right. Oh, yeah. It's not really okay. a dash. It's, not a, it's, a, it's a tweener. Eight, so 800 meters, how, how would that relate to? Two okay, laps. So that's, it's two laps around the track. Two laps around a regulation size track. Okay. Yes. For the... Non Olympic sports, you. yeah, for me, for me. <laughs> so yeah, which I thought, like, I, I mean, I was thought I was blazing, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's got to be a good time. Like, I, that has to have been a world record at some point in the past, right? Maybe. I mean, you're thinking like maybe the 40s or 50s or yeah, something. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. It's it was it's never been a, as long as they've been keeping. I mean, obviously, as long as, they, they as, long all, as they've been keeping, as long as they've been keeping <laughs> the record for the world record of 800, I would have never won the thing. Unless I had been born a woman in 1972, I would have had the women's 800 meter world record time. In 1972. So you're saying if we invent a time machine and remove your genitals, we can send you back in time and dominate women's track, huh? Oh, I'm just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just built like a 1972 track female athlete. <laughs> Not anymore. You're not. <laughs> I didn't. I don't. I didn't know you in high school. Maybe <clears throat> that's fantastic. Yeah, kind of. It, you know what? It, whenever I saw it, it bummed me out that I would have never had the record. And believe it or not, finding out that I would have been the fastest woman in 1972 made me feel a little better. <laughs> I took. I, I was all right with that. Um, uh, oh, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm. I, I would never have had the fastest 800 meter even if I didn't have any genitals. So, I mean, that's not, I, I never would have held the world record. You know why? I've never run 800 meters in an organized and fashion. just a qualifying outfit. round, uh, the people who were winning the qualifying rounds like were literally beating my best time by 11 seconds. And those dudes aren't even running hard in the qualifying round. That's crazy. So you, you're saying that uh, like the current greatest racers coasting – are better than you were at your trucking, peak. man. <laughs> Trying hard, <laughs> like they would have been finishing, literally like a hundred yards ahead of me. You're saying the crowd would have gotten uh, tired of cheering by the time you showed up. At yeah, the- people would just start yelling and throwing beer bottles at me. <laughs> <laughs> Finish, you <laughs> asshole! <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, I was reading about the. Uh, this got sent in by Eaglet Joe, actually. North Korea's key to Olympic medals. Refrigerators for winners, labor camp threat for losers. No way. <laughs> this is from ABC News, and we'll have a link on our Tumblr page, uh, twoguysonepod.com. North Korea's Olympic athletes are thrilling their countrymen with surprising success and winning medals, and they are attributing their success to their dear leader, Kim Jong-un. I wonder. I wonder why. <laughs> like By winning medal, like how many medals have they won, does it say? Um, North Korea ranks 14th in the overall medal count right now. Or, or well, and of course, this was several days ago, but fifth in terms of the number of gold medals with four. They had already won four gold medals at that point. The country won two golds in men's weightlifting, one in women's weightlifting, and one in women's judo. Uh, they also captured a bronze medal in women's weightlifting. The communist nation has 56 athletes. And that's still all the medals they have, by the way. They have four gold and one bronze. Oh, so that's all they've got. So, uh, all nice. They've Look got. at you updated info here. Um, so the communist I do, I've nation. I've got the Olympic app. Nice, of course you do. Uh, the communist nation has 56 athletes competing in 11 sports. It hopes for additional medals in uh, boxing, wrestling, diving.
table tennis, judo, and archery. The best Olympic uh, results in the past uh, was four gold medals, five bronzes in Barcelona in 92. So five, four gold medals and five bronzes. That's the most they've ever done. Dude, that's um, four refrigerators, man. Yeah. So, okay, this is from Wu Young Lee, a professor at University of North, North, uh, North Korean Studies in Seoul. Or Seoul. It's Seoul, right? Seoul? Yep. Yeah, okay. Athletes in North Korean society are revered as elites, and they are managed, trained, and supported on a national level. Handpicked by the Communist Party's sports committee, the athletes are trained at very young ages and registered at specialized schools would provide daily meals and spending money at times. Um, that's from a defector living in South Korea now. Training involved four hours of ideological education per week aimed at cultivating loyalty to the leader. Upon returning home, gold medal athletes like Kim un Gook and Ann Gook. You've Gum-A. got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> yeah, that His is last, last name Gook. is not Gook. Well, it's G U K. You pronounce it for me. I'm not. I wouldn't. <laughs> it's not Gook. <laughs> Ann Gum A. G U M dash A E. I'm, I'm butchering all these names. Uh, anyway, uh, upon returning home, gold medal athletes would be rewarded with handsome prize money, an apartment, a car, and additional perks like refrigerators and television sets. But most of all, they would be rewarded with a huge jump in social status with the title of hero or people's athlete. Now, see, that would, I'm that part of communist society, I could be down with. Like the the way that they mythologize heroes of the state. Why can't the people choose the their state? own? Well... I mean, I guess we do. Are you really the people's athlete in a communist society? No, you're not. Because you didn't grow up with one of the people. You didn't enjoy those hardships they enjoyed. The government took care of you and gave you the training programs to get it. You are not a people's hero athlete. This is bullshit. Well, here's the downside. You are a commie fascist because you're kind of down with it. No, this is why I'm not down with it. Poor performances, however, especially losing to their arch enemy nations like the United States or South Korea, have consequences. Rumors of athletes being sent directly to labor camps upon arriving home are not confirmed, uh, but it is a common procedure to open review meetings after the sports events in which participants assess their own and each other's games, said Kim Yohan. If during that process the person is determined disloyal to their dear leader, the athlete is likely to be expelled from the sports organization and at times sent to labor camps. Yeah. So, I don't think I'm going to have a future as a North Korean athlete. Just so you know. Dude, they've only got five medals. We've got athletes that have five medals by themselves. Well, like, not, apparently apparently their way is not working, and they're too dumb to see it. Not everybody can be Michael Phelps, though. All right. Here's the other one. This one's from Honeybun. Actually, sent this in yahoosports.com. Headline: Gold medal winning race walker Alex Schwartzer relieved by doping ban. His quote is: "I couldn't take it anymore." Several interesting things there. First of all, we're talking about a gold medal winning race walker. Now, I wasn't quite as surprised by that as I would have been because you had already prepped me for the fact that race walking was an Olympic event. It has been since 1906. Blows my fucking mind. We're talking about speed walking, like the heel to toe in it, like the old ladies do in the malls. <clears throat> yep. Like you have to, uh, one foot always has to be in contact with the ground in race walking. You, you don't know that? Well, I mean, I do now. A day after defending Olympic gold medal champion race walker Alex Schwartza was kicked out of the uh, London Games for blood doping. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, doping. Dude, well, because here's the deal: like you're thinking, you, you're, you're thinking race walking is like um, people walking around track, like it's a it's a 400 meter race walk. No, no, no. They it's thirty. It's like 32 miles that these guys are are walking. Wait, wait, wait. wait. They're they're speed walking like a marathon. Yes. Oh shit. All right, well, at that point, I just think it's like your feet breaking down, isn't it? I mean, like... Like what I'm saying is you're using a lot of oxygen. You're using... Like okay, you're not, well, that's pretty crazy. All right, all right. Well, it's not a couple a of grandmas in fucking track suits. So Alex Alex Schwartz, uh, he's an Italian. That's right. I'm defending race walk. Yeah, he, he won the gold medal, or he's the defending gold medal champion. He got kicked out of the London Games because they caught him doping. Um, he gave a uh, tear-filled press conference, proclaiming that he was actually happy because he had been caught using the Olympic subs- uh, the illegal substances. He's, uh, he says, when you wait for your girlfriend to go to train so that you can lock yourself in the bathroom and inject EPO. What the fuck's EPO? 
I don't even know. Anyway, inject EPO in your veins so that no one will know. It's not nice, <laughs> Schwartz has said in an emotional press conference on Wednesday. I'm not made to take drugs or to deceive people, and I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't wait for the whole thing to end. The substance has a very long name. That's why they call it EPO. It's a substance which can increase the blood's oxygenation. There you go. It's like the number one thing that a race walker would need. Yeah. Huh. EPO has been the synthetic drug of choice for endurance athletes with the world wrecking holding race walkers positive test just the latest EPO scandal to plague competitive race walking. <laughs> it's a plague. <laughs> yes. There's a link, too. This is a, a whole fucking scandal that plagues competitive race walking. This whole sport that you and I didn't even know existed until about 15 People minutes ago. People are just ago. betting on it. Like there's Apparently. off-track betting. Yes. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm, I'm imagining in my head like these farms where race walkers are bred and they're like steroided up from birth. Little, little bitty tops, yeah, <laughs> long, long legs. Yes, like the opposite of bobbleheads. Yeah, bobble, bobble bottoms, bobble bottoms. <laughs> oh man! In the comments on Wednesday, Schwartz has swore he only took the drug in the month leading up to the London Games. Oh yeah, I only did it. This is the first time I've ever done it. I always believe a cheater. Yeah. According to Reuters, Schwarzer obtained the drug in Turkey in September, after which he stored the drug in the refrigerator he shares with his girlfriend, world champion figure skater Carolina Costner, who's um, shown here in a very pretty uh, photo. Anyway, so look at that. Not only is race walking a sport, apparently people are it's cheating corrupt to win. As shit. Yeah, it's corrupt as hell. You got a better chance of being honest in, in boxing than you do in race walking. So, speaking of other sports, you didn't know you could win a gold medal at. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, me too, man. How are we going to play it? Give us the rules. So I'm going to give you the name of a sport, and it's yes or no. Either yes, that sport you can win a medal in. It is an Olympic sporting event. So yes means you can win a gold medal in it. All right. No doesn't mean it's not a sport. It just means it's not an Olympic sport. You cannot win a medal for it. Okay. The first one. Croquet. Can you win a gold medal in croquet? I've never actually played a full game of croquet. I had a set, though, growing up. But you up. are aware it's a yeah, sport. Yeah, I know, I know it's a thing. It's a British thing, right? Yes. It's like, in my estimation of it, it's like yard pool almost. It's it's like snooker, but taken <laughs> to the yard. Um, do they play Olympic it's a, pool? It's a leisure. It's a leisure. That's the question. It's really a leisure. Yeah, I'm going to say game. no on croquet. You're right. Croquet is not. An Olympic sport. Nice. But it has been. Oh, you're kidding me. No, croquet was. It used to be an Olympic sport. It no longer is. Uh, we, are we talking, not the classic Olympic games, like the Greek games, so we're talking no, about No, like modern, they, modern, yeah, right. there's modern Olympic games. Croquet, you used to get a medal for it, man. That's crazy. Well, yeah. although, I mean, the whole thing was started mostly by Brits, wasn't it? So I guess that makes sense. Like, wasn't the modern Olympic tradition mostly... Funded by the British Empire. I, maybe I made that up. There I can you go. neither confirm nor deny those allegations. I can neither confirm nor deny the UK's <laughs> involvement. Softball. Uh, and that, I'm going to say yes, definitely an Olympic event. Because baseball is very popular worldwide. Women play softball, not baseball. I'm going to say yes. No. What? Softball is not an Olympic sport. Baseball is, though, right? Nope. What? Not an Olympic sport either. I'm amazed by this there are lots of international competitions though for both. baseball baseball is going on during the summer right now right so all the and it is worldwide it's not i mean you don't just play baseball in the summer in the states you play baseball in the summer in japan too i'm imagining right yeah so everybody's playing baseball right now or most people are playing baseball right so they can't play it at the olympics baseball and softball are both sports that you could win a gold medal back in the day they, they both used to be sports huh Huh. Yeah, no, I'm very surprised that softball's not still one. So you're one for one? Yeah. Individual dressage. Okay. I wouldn't even know what dressage is. I still don't, in fact, except that I am a dude who hangs out <laughs> online a lot, and I know that there's way too many uh, jokes about the word dressage over the past couple of weeks on Twitter. I'm going to say, yes, you can get a gold medal in dressage. Yes, what the fuck is it? <laughs> uh, it is a. It's an equestrian sport. It's an equestrian event. Yeah, horses. Horses. Okay. Uh, and I believe this is the event where the horse is not judged, the rider is. 
So are their legs bent the proper angle? Are they too far to however they're sitting in the saddle? So it's literally just how you ride your horse? Yes, and there's there's uh, like it's not an event where one person goes and rides like there's like an arena. There's like five or six of them. Okay, in the arena, the judges are judging them all. I I guess I, I'm going to need to see some video of that. But it's it's called individual dressage. <laughs> Sounds dirty, doesn't it? Not dressage. No dressage. I, I kept I kept pronouncing it dressage when I was reading it on Twitter. I was like, why are they? Why, what the fuck is dressage? <laughs> Dressage. Okay. There you go. All right. So I'm two for one. I have two and one. Yes. Yes. Two and one. Trampoline. All right. Well, it would Can be. Can I win a gold medal for jumping on a trampoline? It would be in with the gymnastics if it existed. I know that there is a trampoline in the. I mean, that they, ha- they have a trampoline there because it's not a trampoline, they use it's it. A, it's a springboard. But they have a real they have a, tr- a real trampoline too, don't they? In some in one of the things, don't they use a trampoline? I could have sworn that I've. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. There is a gold medal in trampoline. Yes, there is a gold medal in trampoline. Boom! I knew I'd seen one like in years past. <clears throat> on you know, I'm. It's not really. It's part- not just jumping up and down though, huh? No, no, no. They have um. Like you, you do two rounds. One of them is a free round where you can do. Tricks? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you do tricks in both of them, but there's certain elements you have to hit in one round. Okay. Like the floor show, right? When you do the floor yeah, like exercises. Have, yeah, yeah, like you have to have uh, a twist, a spin, a double, you, you know. Right. Those different families of tricks, I guess. Uh, and so you get 10, you get 10 bounces, man. Like you have 10 different things you have to do in consecutive order and there's like a meter long square in the center of it that you have to stay in if you step out of it while jumping that's deductions and let me tell you these folks get high like it's not like you in the backyard jumping on trampoline like they're getting 30 feet in the air really yeah like it's ridiculous it's sick It, it it gives me gives me vertigo watching them yeah, that's good. That, like that's some circus shit. That's not an Olympic sport. That's but it is apparently so. All right, so three and one now. Yeah, I'm doing well. I didn't yeah. think I'd be doing this well. Yeah, women's decathlon. That's okay. So, so that's the one where you have like ten events. Like yeah. you got to race and swim and bicycle and shoot a gun and ski and you know I don't know that I'm oh, doing have them a, all they right. Have the shot put. Uh, I want to say they high jump or pole vote pull pole. pole vault right they do the hurdles i think a hundred meter dash maybe they run the mile that's got to be an event it's got to yeah you got to yes yes no the women's decathlon is not an olympic event the women do not do the decathlon they do the heptathlon how the fuck many is heptathlon i don't know seven (laughs) that's a shot in the dark i don't know i don't (laughs) I know it ain't 10. <laughs> Two guys, one pot at me.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many is a heptathlon? Um, I, yeah, I'm going to get hep. I'm trying to think what else has the precept hept. Hepatitis? Hep, <laughs> hep, hepatitis? No. I don't think that's what I they're know, talking that's about. I know. That's not a gold medal I want. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, why do you think the women don't do decathlon? Is it is it just a matter of endurance? Like they're like the bodies aren't capable no, of it No, we something? just like to keep them separate. <laughs> If we let them do the decathlon, they'll start demanding equal pay. Yeah. <laughs> the right to vote and shit. We'll have to stop giving out of these bronze medals. Uh, all right, so three and two. Yeah, not bad. Better than what I thought. Yeah. I, I, I would not have thought. If you told me I'm going to tell you five, I would have figured I probably would have gotten two of them. Well, I didn't I didn't even think about you like getting peripheral information from Twitter. Oh, the dresses. Yeah, see, I yeah, wouldn't yeah. have gotten dressage. Dressage. Dressage, yes. I wouldn't have gotten dressage, except for the fact that I, I – like, and I still didn't I, – I didn't have any idea that it was horse-related, for instance. I just knew that a bunch of people made jokes about the word dressage. Uh, dr- dressage. So, there you go. You yeah. think we got a lot of equestrian riders that listen to the show? I bet not. <laughs> I bet – I mean, I am a stallion, so we got one. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh, if it were true. Let me tell you, this here's here's a good deal though, and I didn't plan this ahead of time, but our if you could is going to segue right into this perfectly. Here's the if you could for this week. You can't create a segue by saying segue. I mean, I guess you could because you just did. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. No, it's it maintains the we've been talking about what have we been talking about? Olympic, Olympic athletes. Mm-hmm. Humans at the absolute peak of, of performance. If you could have one art form in which you were an elite practitioner. Origami. <laughs> Boy, that's it's the obvious. Really? Yeah. You're gonna be the best origami er in the world? Yeah. Name name an origamiist. Name I, one. I don't know a single one. Exactly. How pimp of a fucking origamiist do I have to be that everyone would know me? You'd say name an origamiist, and everybody go that fucking other guy. There's nothing in this conceit, though. There's nothing in this. If you could, to presuppose that it would be a famous. Oh, then I don't artist. want to fucking do any art. That's no, 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 no. That's what, so. That's build that into your answer. Then, what art form would allow you a big stage? Then, if that's important to you, I'm saying if you could choose one art form and you would be considered one of the elite masters of it, yeah, what would I'm it be? An elite, if I'm the, an elite master origamiist, everybody would have to know it. That's not true at all. There's a lot. Do you know the best knitter in the world? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our mutual friend's wife. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but that's not quantifiable. We don't know that for a uh, fact. She showed me how to finger knit. Uh, that Which sounds, sounds dirty, doesn't it? I was going to say. It? You... It's the only reason I said it. It's the only reason I said it. I've never finger knitted. <laughs> I don't. I'm... Although I think that should be. I think that should be a, a new euphemism that that we can use. Uh, finger knitting may be part of um, French cuddling. No. What? What was the What was the thing that we talked about? The there was Dutch the, like the, No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do we? Uh, our mutual friend said it's not Turkish. Turkish bathhouse? No, Turkish. It's like Turkish cuddling, something. I don't know. And then we made the joke about French fondling. French fondling. Ah, there you oh, go. Yeah, Freedom fondling. Go. Freedom, Freedom fondling. fondling. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a long way around. Anyway, yeah. For, I think I think uh, finger knitting is is one of the things you do when you're French fondling. Uh, are you saying the French are hairy? <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't even think about it like that yet. <laughs> Yeah. yeah um, you no, know, I just. I mean, that's only. That's the only way, that's still, dude, that's the only way I made that correlation. <laughs> nice. I yeah. Gotcha. All right. So you want to be an origamiist? Really? Like if I, I'm, Do you enjoy it? Have you ever folded paper on purpose? No, I fucking <laughs> hate it. I think it's completely useless to do. What a waste of time. So why would you want to be extremely good at it? Why would you want to be so breathtakingly good at it that that people who've never been interested in origami would now be interested in it? Dude, if I were a painter, there'd be lots of other people up there with me. Be like, oh, Van Gogh. Oh, you're you're just saying that you could be the Picasso of origami because there's not no, one yet. No, I'm, yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't even be the Picasso of origami because Picasso's got Rembrandt to go up against. I don't have anybody. <laughs> I'm the end all, be all, see all, do all origamiist. You know now, though, that he of many names is going to email us in with the name of the, of the real, premier origami. Yeah, I would be surprised. The premier origami. I would, and he tells us in a couple of books about origami that he found helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, so you I wouldn't bet. you wouldn't you dance? I figured you'd say dance. You and you and uh, Mrs. Other Guy love all those fucking dance shows. You don't want to be able to dance. Who says I can't dance? No, but you're not one of the best dancers in the world. That's what I'm offering you. I'm saying look, you look, could look, just look, look. choose. Am I, if, if I were the best dancer in the world right now, people says name a dancer, 80, 80% of everybody's still going to say Fred Astaire, man. All right, then. What a glass half empty view of the damn thing. It's not glass half empty. It's glass completely motherfucking full. I'm the only one. Shit, I don't even remember what art form I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do. And you're the one who sparked it. <coughs> I wish I was the one of the world's best directors. I wish what, I and was. Then, and, then, and then what? Who who just say what is is not an art form? Oh, I'm no. I'm saying I I'm wide open to that. You could tell me I am the world's best toilet cleaner, and I'd say all right. If you do it at a certain level, it's this shit form. might could be an art form. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, Ooh, or mm, you know, you know what would be? Uh, I, I would like to make topiaries. I'd like to be the best topiariest. You want to be Edward Scissorhands? Yeah, man. But without yeah. the handicap? Uh, I don't know. Would you take a handicap for a power like that? Yeah. Like, okay, so if uh, runners, if you were a long, you were a runner in, in uh, high school, for instance, 
if you could get those prosthetic legs and could break every world record, like if it was just if you were good enough that you're like one more thing, if I just had those prosthetic legs, why can't I just be good? <laughs> if if you could just be good and like you're blind in one eye, no. for you to be good at running, we just have to take your legs away, and you're, by default we'll give you prosthetics, and that's your handicap, but it makes you good at it. Why can't I just be good and have like one arm? It's still uh, be difficult because your legs follow your arms. That's why you pump so fast. Would it be Would it be difficult if you were if you had? I mean, I guess the, the, your body would be off balance if you only had one hand. Well, no, just try to like. Okay, I'm, what I, the question that I was really asking was: Would you take a handicap, quote unquote? Would you Would you alter your body to be the best at a thing? Like if I fucking walked around like Rain Man, but I, I was an amazing composer. Yeah. Why didn't you just say that analogy? It's fucking easy. It's relatable. Instead okay, of giving the, me prosthetic legs. Like that's that's a fucking long way to go. I think everybody knows though what I'm talking about. These little the bouncing, the running legs. No, right? I got gotcha. you. Okay, I just if you could why, just why would that be my handicap if they made me better? That's not a handicap. <laughs> okay, but it means that you're the guy walking around with the little tink 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 tink. It's the tink tink. Look, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put you uh we're gonna put you in a boxing match, but you you literally get lead hands. <laughs> I mean, your hands were cut off, they're replaced with hunks of metal, and you get to fucking yes, MMA okay. it up. So as a, as a boxer... That's not a handicap. It, everywhere else in your life it is, not having real hands. What? Everywhere else in your life having lead hands would be a handicap. If you couldn't use your hand, if they were only fists... I could think of a couple of things where it'd be spectacular. <laughs> Just gigantic fists? Gigantic lead fists? Yeah. What? Uh, if I was trying to rob a bank, <laughs> they'd be pretty handy. If I was trying, hey, look, look. If you're look, the world's if most, I was, if I was the world's best free diver, lead motherfucking hands <laughs> would be awesome. That's not true because gravity says that everything falls, everything's got a maximum speed anyway, right? Like lead doesn't fall faster than no. I'm your talking body. about free diving in the ocean, man. Yeah, so lead hands are the lead hands are going to make you sink, motherfucker. Ex I'm trying to be the world's greatest goddamn free diver. That's what you do. You sink as far as you can until you can't sink no more. Then you come back up. Why? Lead hands would make me go down faster so I could sink further. Is that... What is a... Maybe I misunderstand free diving. What is free diving? <laughs> it's, it's people who dive down to the ocean. There's a, there's a boat off the boat. You've never heard of this? No, I don't guess so. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Read a book. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of books about free diving. So there's a, <laughs> free basing. Anyway, there's it's, lots it's, of books about. There's people who do this. There's um, so there's a boat. There's a line from the boat that goes down so many hundreds of feet, thousands of feet. Right. Uh, and the diver has a, has the little thing on the rope and completely unaided, no scuba tank, no nothing. That's why it's called free diving. It's just it's just you. It's how you train your lungs and your body to handle the pressure. Oh. And you dive down as far as you can. And then once you get so far, there's a little balloon you pull it, and it drags you back up. So if I had lead hands, I could go faster. Yes, and your lungs would explode. No, you'd learn how to you'd adapt. <laughs> no, you'd have lead hands. You'd sink. But until I pulled the balloon, <laughs> which would be buoyant enough to lift me and my lead hands. Fuck, why would I do something? Why would I not have a contingency plan? I don't know. You're the dude that got lead hands. <laughs> Here's, Goddamn. The original question was, what art form would you Origamius. would you want to be an elite version of? I, yes, I, yes, we're aware. You're an idiot who wants to be an origamius. <laughs> we know. Dude, I could just... Like, How'd you, I just, how do you I turn a, money if I, had, if, I had a, if I had just loose leaf paper, there's a flock of seagulls, man. Yes, yes, but how do you make money out of that? How do you turn that into anything? People get paid to make goddamn eye sculptures. They may get paid to make sandcastles. You don't think I could get paid to make art out of paper? Yeah, okay, I suppose you could sell your art that way. Yeah. Because I'm an origamiist, man. I'm the best origamiist there is. The I only could make John, I could make John Lennon out of wide rule, motherfucker. <laughs> like, who doesn't want that? Like a 3D John yeah, Lennon. Done. Who needs Lego? Believe written below it. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Um. Yeah. No. I'd l I'd love to be like a top director, like like a Nolan, a Scorsese, or something like that. I tell you a skill. I don't need to be elite at this. I just like to be decent at it. Sex. I'd, no. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> the reviews are very positive. Look, it's one of those things, dude, you don't have to be ashamed about it. Sex is one of those things that even if you're good at it, you want to be better. Well, yeah, obviously. You just let Honey Bun and a little insight. You don't you don't care enough to keep trying. Like you think you're good enough. <laughs> Honey Jesus. Bun, wherever that level is, baby, that is where it's going to stay. I was good talking luck. about art. It, I wish I could draw. 
You do draw. I do a little. I'm not very good at it. So I wish I had. I wish I had more skill. It's something that I'm actually I'm actively working on. I'm. It is a thing that I'm going to try to get better at. Uh, yeah, I have. I'm so I, I'm so artistically inept anyway. I'm I'm just not interested. You, I've never are, fostered an interest. Your 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 love for arts has only fostered an uh, an interest in being a patron. Like that's where it's ended up for you. You're like like you go to a gallery, you'll go see a play. Oh, the joy I get out of is go the see appreciation a movie. of it, not not yes. that I can actually do it. Yeah. 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 I like to see people that can do a thing I I can't like the guy who was whistling it just amazed me and I always wanted to do it. I appreciate the thing that I can't do. So literally I appreciate like seven things. I mean, and and once you have that few things to appreciate, you're pretty fanatical about it. I got you. I got you. See, I I guess I'm I'm most interested in things that I can do myself. Uh I mean the things that why I have that's why you have two kids. <laughs> <laughs> Little carbon copies of me too. Um so that is another show. Look at that. Woo. Uh, you can email us two guys one pod at me dot com. You can find us online two guys one pod dot com. Very very easy. Please subscribe in iTunes. Write us a review. Don't beg. <laughs> it's unbecoming. I ain't too proud to beg, sweet darling. Please no listener. Don't. My day's the same. <laughs> such such a salesman. <laughs> All right, I'm one guy and I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. I have to write a song Every day I'll write a song I'm feeling good with my plan Write a song